good afternoon. My name is Victoria Montero. I am the executive director of the Hispanic Center Lehigh Valley. The Hispanic Center Lehigh Valley is happy to welcome Jennifer Gonzalez Colon, resident commissioner for Puerto Rico and Morinon Stein, Republican candidate for the USA House of Representatives. The Hispanic Center um, Lehigh Valley has been a pillar of the South Side Valley community since 1968. As a nonprofit agency, the center is committed to serving the needs of our community through programming and advocacy efforts. Our intent is to create a community. Our intent is to create a community. Our intent is to create a community. To, I'm sorry. Our intent is to create a community uh, to create opportunities for open dialogue, where our community has the chance to ask questions <coughs> and be in the front row, speaking on behalf of issues and needs with local politicians and government officials. The Hispanic Senate is preparing for its inaugural health equity summit to discuss immigration issues on November 6th. We urge you to attend and start this very permanent, this very important conversation. To register, please visit our website uh, at the Hispanic Center. Additionally, we also have invited Susan Wire, Democratic candidate for the U.S. House, House of Representatives, to share the meal and open conversation in the upcoming weeks to ensure that both parties are engaged with our community. <coughs> now we give the message in Spanish. El Centro Hispano Liga Valley está complacido al dar la bienvenida a Jennifer González Colón, Comisionadora Presidente de Puerto Rico y a Maureen Onstein, candidato republicano al Congreso de los Estados Unidos. El Centro Hispano ha sido un pilar para la comunidad del sur de Bethlehem desde 1968. Como una agencia sin fines de lucro, el centro está comprometido a servir las necesidades de nuestra comunidad a través de esfuerzos de programación y apoyo. Nuestro propósito es crear oportunidades para un diálogo abierto donde nuestra comunidad tenga la posibilidad de hacer preguntas y estar informados, hablando a favor de nuestros asuntos y necesidades de políticos y de influencia y oficiales gubernamentales. El Centro Hispano se está preparando para su conferencia sobre la equidad en la salud, donde se discutirán asuntos sobre inmigración el martes 6 de noviembre de 1918. Los invitamos a asistir y a comenzar esta cooperación tan importante. Por favor, visite nuestra página en la red para registrarse. Adicionalmente, hemos invitado a la, can a a la candidata al Congreso por el Partido Demócrata Susan White para compartir una comida y una discusión abierta en las próximas semanas, para asegurarnos que ambos partidos están comprometidos con nuestra comunidad. En este momento, at this moment, I would like to introduce Marty to come up to the podium, and we can start engaging in the conversation, have our seniors ask questions. En este momento, me invitando a Marty to come up. I visited, it was just incredible, and I, and I wanted to come back, and I just want to thank everybody for the hard work they, they do here. Uh, the one thing I remember when I was here the last time, the energy I felt in this room was phenomenal. The energy I felt in this community was, in, was incredible. And it's something that, you know, it kept me energized the whole day. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about my story. Not everybody knows who I am. I like to say I have more than a resume, I have a story. I was born and raised right here in Lehigh Valley. I was born in Allentown. I've lived here my entire life. My wife and I raised our family here. I have a 23-year-old son and a 20-year-old daughter. Um, I, I was, first part of my life, I trained to be one of the best athletes in the world. More specifically, the fastest man on a bicycle. So it required a lot of time, a lot of dedication, a lot of sacrifices. Uh, despite all the hard work and setbacks, I continued every single day. I became a national champion when I was only 16 years old. I became a world champion when I was 22 years old. In 1996, I won an Olympic silver medal in a photo fit. I like to say I lost a gold medal by a fraction of an inch. It took the photo finish cameras 15 minutes to determine who won that race. I still think I won, but I didn't. So after years and years of training extremely hard, putting my life on the line, and my family sacrificing, uh, you would think I'd be very happy with the result of the silver medal at the Olympic Games. I wasn't. That night, when people were celebrating my Olympic silver medal, I put my, my medal on the table, and I told my family, and I told my coaches, and I told my staff, we start for the Olympic gold tomorrow. 
Now we all know the Olympics aren't the next day, they're not the next week, they're not the next month, they're not even the next year. They're four years away. That's a long time to wait. That's a lot of sacrifice, a lot of hard training. So I went back four years later, and I competed in the Olympic Games in Sydney, Australia, and I won the Olympic gold medal. And I brought it back here to the Lehigh Valley. I brought it back to my home in Allentown in the Lehigh Valley. It was one of the most proudest days of my life. Towards the end of my cycling career, I built a small car wash business, bought a vacant piece of ground, built the business from the ground up. My wife and I still own and operate that small business today. I also own and operate my family's farm. I have a 170 acre farm that I own and operate. So we have cash crops, corn, beans, hay. And uh, so, very proud to be part of Lehigh Valley. Three years ago, I was elected to Lehigh County Board of Commissioners. I've been chairing the board for the last two years. And over those last two years, under my leadership, we were able to make the smallest tax rate for homeowners in Lehigh County. I also worked with both sides to get our senior care center, Cedar Brook Senior Care Center, with a brand new renovation project and a, and a building project. A $68 million investment that we did in Lehigh County for the senior citizens of our county. I was very proud for me for this, one of my proudest moments. But I have something here for you guys today. I know you're very passionate sports fans, and this doesn't really come out very often, but I brought my Olympic gold medal today. You know why? Because of the energy I felt in this room last time I was here. You people are so passionate about life, so passionate about everything in the community, the same as I am. Again, I was born and raised here. My family's been here a long time. I've seen this community grow, and I love it. I love everyone in this room. And the energy I felt here last week was just incredible. So now I'm running for U.S. Congress, because I want to be the representative for everyone in this room, not one side or the other. I want to be the representative that does what's right for every single citizen in this district. Whether you live in the farmlands of the northwestern part of this district, or you live in Bethlehem, or you live in East Newark, around town. We are one community with one goal, and that's to get along together and make sure that we take care of each other. And right now, that's not always the case. That isn't always the case. When I won this Olympic gold medal, I might have been the guy who pedaled the bike. I might have been the guy who stood on the podium. But the community around me is the one that charged me. The community around me is the one that made me pedal my bike harder than I ever thought possible. Because of people like you. I thought of people like you back home whenever I traveled the world winning races. So thank you for having me. I'd love to share the medal with you. I don't know if anybody's seen Olympic gold medal, but they're pretty cool. <laughs> they're pretty cool. So uh, again, thank you for having me. I, you know, answer any questions that you might have right now. But uh, thank you again for having me. The electricity is just fantastic. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes. Uh, Mr. Larry, I want to know why do they want to extend the age to receive Social Security from 62, 65 to 7? Yeah, well, that's a great question. So, one thing I won't, I, I am not going to do anything to touch Social Security. And as a matter of fact, there's one thing that I've been saying on this, you know, when I've been campaigning. I'm the only candidate that wants to remove the tax off of Social Security. Think about that. You pay the Social Security as a tax. When they give it back to you, they tax it again. That's our money, right? That has to stop. You know, one thing I've done throughout my career as a county commissioner is make sure we take care of seniors. That was a $68 million investment in our Cedar Brook nursing home. My parents rely on Social Security. We need to make sure it's there for you. We need to make sure it's there for the next generation. And we got to strengthen it, and we got to take that tax off of it because the tax isn't right. We should not be taxed twice in our own money. How do you plan on them to not tax that money more? What's going to be well, the process? Take, it's going to take legislation. I mean, we're going to have to get it passed, you know? So, but that's a common sense piece of legislation that should work. You know, that's that's not a Republican or a Democratic thing. That's just a smart thing to do. Yeah. Do you have any line in your office that we could call any complaint from the city or any complaint for us? Any complaint from the city? 
If I'm elected, I can promise you this. You will have my line, and you will have me serving you, no matter what it takes, whether it's a city issue or a federal issue. I was that way before I became a candidate for Congress. I've done a lot of work in the city center, getting young kids on bicycles. I've been doing this for years. And we bring the, we bring the programs into the cities. I was lucky. I grew up close to the Velodrome, which is a bicycle racing track in Trestle Town, a mile away from my, from my home. So I was lucky to just be a mile from, from a place that helped me become an Olympic champion. I lucked into it. Growing up, I wanted to be an Olympian. I just never knew cycling was going to be my path. So I lucked into cycling. A neighbor introduced me to the sport. So after I had success in cycling, I kept telling myself, being born and raised in Allentown, spending a lot of time there with my grandmother and grandfather who live in Allentown, uh, we have to bring the programs to the people. We have to bring the programs to the people. Because not everybody can get to the, to the venues. And we've had incredible success with that. And not everybody's going to become an Olympian. We, you know, but it was one of the most energizing programs for me, an awarding program for me, because we had such young kids who were happy to be on a bicycle for the first time, who wanted to lose a few pounds of weight, had great self-esteem, and they felt better going to school. They felt better in their grades were getting better. So these are good things that happen. And I've done that for the last 15 years. I retired in 2006, but you know, my commitment is to this community will always be to this community. I can promise you that. Well, thank you for the great question. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give you my card. You can contact me. Yeah. You want to. Yeah. 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 I'm going to give you my card. I 
can do it in English, but I wanted to do it in Spanish. Okay, yo quiero que ellos sean con el tiempo. Somos una comunidad hispana grande en Estados Unidos. Do you want to translate? Porque voy a hablar un poquito. Somos una comunidad bastante grande en los Estados Unidos y vinimos aquí y vivimos aquí. Uh, yo sé que debe haber muchas estrategias que usen los políticos para llegar a la comunidad hispana. Yeah. So we are a community that came here, we live here, and there's many strategies that politicians use to come to our community. Yeah. Uh, hoy aquí yo estoy sola, mi persona, pero represento 147 residentes hispanos en el building donde yo vivo. Today she's here by herself, but she represents 147 uh, citizens that live in her yeah. building where she lives. Muchas veces ellos no conocen el sistema de cómo registrarse para votar porque casi siempre son online y pues personas de edad avanzada pues no conocen ese proceso. Many of them do not know the process of how to register to vote. Uh, y muchas veces ellos no saben por qué van a votar o qué van a hacer el día de las elecciones porque no conocen los candidatos. And many times they don't know who they're going to vote because they're not informed or educated on the candidates. Casi siempre los conocen así. All they know is a piece of paper. Yeah. And sometimes this piece of paper is very important. Yeah. For me, it's very important. Yeah. Yeah. I work for a long, long time in Puerto Rico with the common book. I know what all it is means yeah. for the island and for the people. Yeah. Yeah. But, hay alguna forma de hacerle saber a la comunidad hispana que ustedes están aquí para defender nuestros intereses, no tan solo cuando son candidatos, sino cuando ya son o antes, cuando tienen eh, el interés de estar. ¿Cómo se envolverían ustedes por la comunidad hispana? So, how do you get more involved in the Hispanic community before you run for office just as a regular community member? Yes, that's a great question. So, you know, luckily for me, the support of Saikin has allowed Latinos to support of Saikin. I understand the culture. I've also embraced many times in South America and enjoyed it. But as an athlete, after I retired from cycling, you know, I took my programs that I sponsored myself, you know, they called the Marty Nostein Bicycle Racing League, brought, these, brought them into the urban cores. And it was about taking care of the people, Latinos, uh, 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 people in, in the city center. Because they don't always have the means to take, you know, to get a drive out to where I grew up. You know? So that's one way I gave back for sure. Uh, also, my my commitment to see to our Cedarbrook nursing home in Lehigh County. Yeah, that's that's people of all colors. That's seniors of all colors there. That's my own personal commitment. I was born and raised in this community. I watched this community grow. I love it. I'm not leaving it. I'm gonna stay here. I care about it. When I go to Washington D.C., I will never forget anybody in this community. Latinos. Whites, African Americans, doesn't matter to me. We are the Lehigh Valley. This is our community. We are all one. And we all want the same thing. We do. And you're right about letting people know about who to vote for. Do your homework. Look it up. See who you like. See if they believe in what you believe. Look them, look them in the eyes. Do you feel in your heart? Is this person but to do what they say. I have a record of success in doing what I said. I've never left this community. And I'm going to continue to fight for it every single day. Thank you. Porque uh, la, 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 la comunidad hispana que nosotros representamos son gente eh, de edad avanzada que muchas veces no saben o no conocen qué voy a hacer. Y muchas veces ellos quieren ver el candidato, quieren verlo. Aunque pase lo que pase, no importa, pero ellos quieren verlo. Sentir que está ahí como están ustedes hoy. Yo no vengo aquí regularmente porque yo pues, trabajo con los del building de Alexander Building 
seguramente no vengo aquí, pero estoy muy complacida con su visita aquí hoy, estoy muy complacida con lo que usted está haciendo y yo personalmente, yo personalmente, soy libre de decir por qué yo quiero votar y yo quisiera decir hoy libremente que quiero votar por usted.
that, that means a lot. Charlie Davis being a friend of mine in, in, in Congress, uh, in the union, a lot of the issues of Puerto Rico because we got uh, more than 22,000 Puerto Ricans living in this district. Uh, so that, that means that we got uh, a tiny community that is big. And, and, and you taking care of those issues, you know, knowing how important it is having uh, the Puerto Rican issues and then the violent issues. Uh, war and electric, it's important uh, because we, we face many challenges. And uh, I know what you're sponsoring and, and organizing this, I really appreciate that. Uh, and, and I hope we can work together on many uh, after the conference. And um, I'm going to say this is now in fact. Gracias por esperarme. Esperamos que un jornal, como decimos nosotros, de. de, de de la media tardanza, pero está bien deseosa de llegar. Eh, ustedes eh, ayudaron tanto eh, con, con los huevos huracán, eh, consiguiendo eh, comida, eh, agua y muchos efectos para ayudar a, a los hermanos en, en la isla que estaban pasando por necesidad. Y yo quería, a nombre de todo el pueblo de Puerto Rico, venir aquí a darle las gracias a ustedes por todo lo que hicieron como comunidad, como vecino, eh, como organización, a través de las iglesias, a través de los non-profits, eh, para que esas cosas llegaran. Eh, porque la primera ayuda, cuando en Puerto Rico no teníamos agua, luz, teléfono, no había nada, ustedes y, 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 y las organizaciones hicieron que esas cosas llegaran y yo se las quiero agradecer. Eh, nosotros desde que llegamos al Congreso, ustedes saben que yo no tengo derecho al voto. I, I don't have the, the right to vote in Congress. I represent 2.2 million American citizens, but I can't vote on the board. That's a terrible thing. I represent 3.2 million Americans, but I don't have the right to vote. So we don't have two senators. We don't have two senators. So that's the reason. Oh, 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 Eh, en los pequeños y medianos negocios, 
eh, hay tantas áreas en las que hemos conseguido recursos, pero la área más importante evidentemente es electricidad. Electricity is the main challenge of our lives. It's not reliable at this time, although we back it up and everybody got power, the reality is it's so fragile that even the storm may, may hit us again uh, and the system will pull the So that's the reason we found two billion dollars to you know, improve the quality of, of, of the power grid on the island. Uh, but again, we need to come up together, make it uh, reliable uh, and, uh, and worthy of another European season. And that means using renewables, LNG, and cheaper ways of, cheaper ways of having energy. Nosotros vamos a necesitar el dinero que se ha asignado, casi 2 billones de dólares para electricidad, se puedan invertir eh, en, en energías renovables, se puedan en gas natural, eh, para que no sea, obviamente, que no pase lo mismo eh, cuando venga la postura acá. Conseguimos 742 millones de dólares para arreglar puentes y carreteras eh, a nivel de Puerto Rico, una falta más. Eh, pero eso eh, nos ayudó a conectar los 28 puentes que se cayeron, en Utuado, en la Garantita, y que desconectaron comunidades completas. Eh, así que esto ha sido, nos ha impactado por todas partes. Eh, a nivel de nuestra agricultura, we lost 80% of our crops and, and our farmers, uh, and we managed to, to secure uh, more than one million dollars uh, in assistance uh, for them. Uh, they need to apply for that directly. Eh, ellos tienen que aplicar directamente a, a, a la ayuda, tienen hasta noviembre para poderlo hacer. Eh, así que hay distintos programas, pero a veces en la isla está todo el mundo, eh, no se sabe por dónde empezar. ¿no? ¿Ah? Están los recursos, eh, ahora no se encuentran eh, los eh, trabajadores de construcción, porque como hay tantos fondos que llegar y llegando, eh, eh, para distintos programas, eh, ese es uno de los grandes retos. El otro es que el dinero llegue, porque ya se aprobó, Cámara Senado, el presidente lo firmó, pero todavía el proceso de, de, de desembolsarlo todo un poco de tiempo. ¿Por qué? Porque las agencias tienen que publicarlo, el gobierno de Puerto Rico tiene que someter propuestas, eh, tienen que revisar si aprobarse en el federal, la gente tiene derecho a, a decir que está de acuerdo o no está de acuerdo, como todo el proceso federal, para que entonces luego venga el desembolso. Y este proceso nos toma tiempo y nosotros estamos pidiendo que se acelere eh, para que podamos recibir el, el dinero rápido. Ya recibimos 1.500 millones hace una semana de uno o dos programas. En diciembre recibimos otra, otra parte y van a haber varios anuncios sobre esto. De, ya aprobado, este dinero aprobado, pero los planes de recuperación que incluyen construcción de viviendas, eh, construcción de eh, vivienda asistida para personas de mayor edad, turismo, eh, obviamente infraestructura eh, soterrada para los eh, homes, para los hospitales, para que estas cosas no vuelvan a pasar y es importante. So there, there are many areas that we need to, to, to fix with, with the federal funds that are assigned and allocated to the island. And this is a great opportunity to build back better, uh, a, a better Puerto Rico, but we need some tools. And those tools are improve, improving our economy. And to make that happen, uh, we, we need to take advantage of this disaster in terms of doing things better. Uh, better infrastructure, better opportunities and, and for that you get sometimes something the people that like like I'm living in Puerto Rico we don't have we can vote for the president, we can vote for the senators, we can vote for members of Congress. You you can you you can speak. And and in this election and uh, I want to say this a lot of members of Congress help us out. Either way, Democratic leaders did it, Republicans leaders did it. But we need to say thank you to those who were there to us in the moment of, of need. And uh, Charlie then, who was in this district, uh, he was always uh, for us for many years, uh, sponsoring all of our bills uh, and supporting uh, the efforts of Puerto Rico, including equality uh, for, for, for the island. And I, I do believe that the people who leave the island, it's not because of the weather here. People leave the islands is because they're looking for better opportunities, because of financial situation, because of a health situation, or family situation. For situations of health, opportunities of employment, education, or personal. 
Nadie porque quiera. Es por necesidad. Pero los que nos quedamos allá, necesitamos, obviamente, eh, poder echar para adelante. Y, y lo que necesitamos es tener esas mismas oportunidades, pero allá. Porque si las tenemos allá, yo sé que mucha gente se va a pegar. Que, sí. No tiene que jugarse, se puede regresar.
preguntas que tengan, yo, yo eh, represento a, a todos los puertorriqueños y eso para mí es un honor y un privilegio. Así que, donde quiera. ¿Por qué ese grupo que está allá este, recibiendo el dinero, todo ese los presupuesto, son ellos los que lo hacen cuando en realidad no ¿Cuál es lo la Junta? Ah, okay, no, pues, ah, porque si nosotros tenemos personas allá inteligentes, son doctores, son arquitectos, ¿por qué ellos cuando en realidad los mismos puertorriqueños pueden hacerlo? President Obama, in a uh, bipartisan meeting in Congress, approved uh, a law that was called PROMESA. And that law provided for an oversight board a member that were supposed to supervise uh, or do an oversight of the uh, fiscal situation of the island because we were in bankruptcy in many uh, local agencies. Así que esa legislación federal que fue aprobada por President Obama in un congreso bipartita, o sea, que fue una legislación bipartita. Eh, buscó poner una junta de control fiscal para que ayudara a poner en orden las finanzas del gobierno de Puerto Rico que estaba en la ley. Eh, y aunque esa ley, the law provided 60 recommendations of, of changing federal law, uh, did appoint those members. Some of them for a reason, some of them from the states. In our part, some of them. The way they were working before the year again, was very, very, uh, they were very, they were upsetting a lot of the uh, local public policy. I mean, cutting expenses is one thing, and cutting basic needs is another. Tumbar el servicio esencial es una cosa y reducir los gastos es otra. And you need to make a balance in those two issues when you are in a crippled one. So after the year, they made change. Yeah, and they began to have better communication with the leader of Manada. Before that, they never met. Uh, so, ellos ahora se están reuniendo con el presidente de la Cámara, el gobernador, and they have reached some agreements. Ellos han logrado algunos acuerdos eh, sobre, por ejemplo, habían 136 agentes del gobierno. There were 136 uh, local agencies on that. That's a lot of, you know, government. Uh, but on the other side, there were some services that are, you know, part of the uh, moving economy. So in that sense, they reached some agreements in making some uh, reforms, like permitting, reforma de permiso para que los productores un negocio no tengan que estar seis meses o ocho meses. It took today, it took almost eight to nine months to establish a shop or a business, and we need to, to fix that. That's one of the reforms. But yes, there are still uh, some in, uh, Passes, impasse uh, on several issues regarding public policy, and the issue is nobody voted for you. Uh, I don't know why you are taking decisions. And uh, at the end of the issue is that as a territory, and Congress got the ultimate war in peace regarding the island. Como territorio, el Congreso puede hacer lo que le da la gana. ¿Por qué? Porque no tenemos esa representación. There, there are some cases at court that are being litigated. Se está litigando en las cortes y lo que se está logrando es hacer unos acuerdos en distintas áreas que han reducido dramáticamente la pelea. Pero como quiera hay una serie de intercambios. Yo espero que al final del camino, con los fondos federales que están entrando, no haya ninguna necesidad de implantar alguna de estas medidas. Gracias. Pero ¿Question?
sin necesidad de un plebiscito. Si no queda un plebiscito, pues siempre, aunque ganamos el plebiscito, nunca nos vamos a dar. Miren, miren, qué bueno que me hace esa pregunta. Eh, sobre ese tema, estamos en el Indian Spanish of America, en el Ghetto, en el Spanish Year. La plataforma del Partido Republicano desde 1945 establece el respaldo a la historia para Puerto Rico. Y esta plataforma que nos firmó el presidente dice que si el pueblo de Puerto Rico así lo pidió, él va a transicionar a Puerto Rico hacia la estabilidad. Por eso es la plataforma republicana que dice en junio de 2016. La, o sea, que eso es la ley de, de la ley de la nación. O sea, esta es la plataforma. I'm, I'm saying that the uh, RNC platform, the Republican National Committee platform from uh, 1945 uh, to 2016, uh, endorsed uh, Puerto Rican status. And that's been the law of the Republican Party since then. And this Republican platform is going even further, saying that uh, we should transition Congress uh, from the territory to become a full state of, of the nation. Even that, with the Trump campaign, even when I was with Senator Marco Rubio, he put it out an act uh, saying that he as a president will be, that was the will of the Puerto Rico, uh, a transition uh, to state, uh, to uh, guarantee equal, uh, equal rights and first class citizenship to all uh, American citizens living in life. Así que en su propia campaña él hizo un, eh, un statement público por escrito, no en Twitter, eh, por escrito, de que él respaldaría hacer la transición como presidente de ser electo y va a transicionar a Puerto Rico. Y que eso le iba a tocar al, al Congreso hacer el, el, el trámite porque tiene que hacerse por la vía congresional, ¿no? como se han hecho en el resto de los estados. A ese efecto nosotros eh, eh, introdujimos un proyecto de ley. En that regard, we, 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 we filed a bill. Uh, that at this time is co-sponsored by more than 59 members in our bipartisan way. 59 congresistas están respaldando este proyecto de manera bipartita en igual cantidades. Eh, and this is the first time ever that a state would build on the house. I mean, on the house side. Always is left side, right now. This is a, this is a transition uh, uh, for a state of, uh, for a state of, for a state of, for a state of, for a state of, de Puerto Rico como territorio a la salida que vaya directo ¿no? eh, porque ya hemos votado en el 2012 en el 2017, en el último plebiscito que hubo que, que, de los que votaron 97% de los que votaron de la salida eh, así que el mandato está ahí nosotros estamos consumando eh, eso ahora después de los midterms after the meeting, the chairman of the committee is going to make uh, some expressions about it uh, the committee is going to handle the issue and I think we're going to have a mark of the bill Uh, and we're looking for more friends in the Senate side. Um, because I don't think the House will be a problem. I think it's going to be the Senate side. Uh, así que nosotros estamos buscando en el Senado también eh, ayuda, eh, porque esto tiene que verse los dos cuerpos. En la Cámara tenemos tracción. Eh, pero la fuerza más importante la tienen ustedes. The, the, the leading force behind this, you have it in your own hands. Because we can't go, but you can. You can call your senators. You can call your members of Congress. You can elect members of Congress that support state. And that should be the main issue. And actually, most Puerto Ricans are, are using that as a way uh, to sponsor candidates. Uh, because, I mean, what else? Once you get full equality, <coughs> you got it all. And you have the opportunity to put your hand to vote here. Y no es lo mismo que lo diga yo. It's not the same thing that I call Marty or that I call any member. You know, begging, like I always do. I don't mind. That's my job. <laughs> But for you, uh, instead of begging, you can inquire. You can, you can, you can, you can, see, you can demand. Uh, because you're constituents. Después de exigirle a su congresista, es porque no me digo muy en la que es porque nosotros queremos. Y muchos de ellos han escuchado. Lo he visto, yo estuve ayer en Nebraska, congresista en Nebraska, así mismo como estamos aquí hoy. La comunidad le dijo lo mismo, ¿qué hizo? Estoy con ustedes. Así que se hace loca. Eh, y yo creo que algo bueno que nos dejó el huracán, que no fueron muchas cosas. Eh, uno fue la fe en Papá Dios. Eh, que nos encontramos como pueblo otra vez. ¿verdad? Y empezamos a compartir con los vecinos, los vecinos y volver a ser humildes. One of the few things that the hearing uh, brought us was, again, faith 
living life and mm-hmm. praying himself and living in a humble way and coming back to basis, basics with, with, with neighbors. But the other ones was everybody knew that we are American citizens. And we don't need a green card. And most people don't even knew that. Even members of Congress had that. Que la labor de educación que se hizo por, por eso, nosotros tenemos que aprovechar la agua. Y yo les pido a ustedes que recen por nosotros. Yo les pido a ustedes que nos pongan en oración para que Papá Dios y la Virgen nos den las herramientas de vivir a Puerto Rico, de, que nos dé más oportunidades para echar la isla para, para adelante y conseguir los recursos. I ask you, I ask you, all of you, to put them in your prayers. Uh, so we can have the tools uh, to improve uh, the situation in the island and the situation of the Latinos and all four regions. I think that, uh, that's what people stand in. And that's what we want to keep all of them. So I thank you for your time and I want to thank you for all the doors. For all the doors, not only for this community, but for all the communities, because we want to keep the doors y como uno de, de oportunidad y yo estoy disponible eh, para asistir a lo que ustedes entiendan quisiera también eh, hacer posteriormente como pues, tenemos un reconocimiento a todas estas organizaciones y líderes que ayudaron durante el proceso eh, de este huracán yo creo que eso es ahora lo que también corresponde dar gracias a quienes dieron de sí para que nosotros estaramos fatigados Thank you, Marty. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.